This video is going to cover a basic site-to-site -site IPsec tunnel between two Florida gates. None of that wizard crap either. We're going to do this custom. Hey guys, so I got a couple of messages via Facebook and, and email. And basically it was a couple of people that were asking about setting up IPsec tunnels between two Florida gates. Um, which is extremely useful if you're in a situation where you have two branches and they need to share information between each other without it going over the public internet. Uh, for those of you that don't know, IPsec is basically a means of tunneling traffic between two locations so that it's encrypted and protected. It also keeps you from having to open up anything from like the outside world coming in. So it helps with security and helps keep things tight there. So we're going to jump into our lab FortiGates so we can actually do this process and we'll go through it. Some things to consider. You need four parameters proper in order for an IPsec to take place. Your phase one settings, first and foremost, have to be right. If they're not right, you're going to run into a situation where the phase ones won't match and won't work. Step two, your phase twos need to match accordingly as well. That's what uh, defines networks that will be protected, etc. Step three is these are route based tunnels using interface mode IPsec on a FortiGate. So you must make sure that you have your static routes or whatever routing you're using set up to tell the FortiGate to send traffic over said IPsec tunnel. And then step four, you have to have your policy to allow the traffic to traverse. So with that being said, let's jump in and we'll do some edits. <clears throat> so we're sitting here. These are our two Forti gates. Now, their outside interfaces are on the same network, 10.30.1.10, 10.30.1.20. It's a private network, but it's not really pertinent for this situation. I just wanted you guys not to freak out whenever you see that. Uh, these are on the same lab environment, so as far as they're concerned, the two subnets that are behind each FortiGate are still hanging out. So I'm going to, first step is log in, if I can remember the password to each one. Mm -hmm. I did not shut these things down properly, by the way. I just powered them off. Don't do that in your production environment. <clears throat> so when you're doing your IPsec tunnel, you need to pay attention to things like uh, your phase one, your phase two, your static routes, and your policies. But before you even get that far, you need to know what networks do I want to talk to each other. For instance, FortiGate 1 has 10.100.25.0 slash 24, that whole subnet. FortiGate 2 has 26.0. For this video, our goal is to make it to where 25.1 can ping 26.1 and vice versa. So, that being said, we know what our local and remote subnets will be. So on the left, you go to VPN, you click IPsec tunnels. Now, whenever you create new, you will get the option to do site to site, hub and spoke, remote access, and custom. I do custom, I recommend custom. When you do the wizards, it automatically creates address objects and a whole bunch of other stuff. It makes the configuration messy, which later down the road can get quite cumbersome. So I wanna do custom, I'm going to name this to FortiGate 2. Click Next, and it'll take you into where you define your Phase 1. Our static IP address of the other end is 10.30.1.20, and we're going to connect to that using our Port 1 interface, which is our WAN interface in this situation. We're not doing any NAT traversal for this. So for those of you that don't know, NAT traversal is when the device that's creating the IPsec tunnel is behind or has to pass through 
a NAT device like a router or maybe even another firewall in order for it to build the tunnel. We're not going to do that because these are just presenting as they're both on the internet and they do all the NAT for their internal networks themselves. So we'll click disable for NAT traversal. Dead peer detection we will leave to on demand. That's basically how it determines if the other end is up or live and dead. And then we will leave the advanced options out of it because this is for a basic video, right? So now we dive into our authentication. We're going to use Ike version 1. Um, I've run into a lot of situations where connecting FortiGate to ASA, you want to do like Ike version 2 because they can't handle some stuff. But for FortiGate to FortiGate, I like to use Ike version 1. And we'll define our pre-shared key here, which for the sake of this video is just going to be password. Keep it simple. These are our encryption methods for phase one. I'm going to leave all of these there, but basically, usually, what you want to do is choose the most secure encryption and authentication algorithm you can that the devices support. And then DH groups, there's different levels of um, capability between the DH groups. So uh, the higher the DH group, usually the, the more secure and capable it is. Our lifetime, this is how long the SA is going to be built between the two FortiGates. I leave this at default for a FortiGate to FortiGate configuration. In fact, from, from phase one down, you can leave almost everything to default just for the sake of this type of deployment. Uh, in the phase two, this is two FortiGate two. Now this is where you have to be specific on some things. I need to enter my local subnet that I want to be able to go over this tunnel, which is 10.25.10.100.25.0/24. If you wanted your phase two to be loosey goosey and allow any network to traverse that knows to go over it, you could do 0.0.0.0/slash 0.0.0.0. That's not best practice though from a security perspective. So we recommend tying down the phase twos based on the actual networks that wish to traverse. And then 10.100.26.0 slash 24 is my remote end. That's FortiGate 2's network. Come down here. I like to have auto negotiate and auto keep alive up. I like the tunnel to stay up nonstop. Modern FortiGates are a little bit better at overhead and things of that nature. So you don't have to worry about situations where uh, you need to keep resources low. So if the tunnel's not in use, pull it down type thing. So that's our phase one configuration and then our phase two configuration. Click OK. Now we need to make sure our static routes are in proper. So we go to network, static routes, and we will create new. And we're going to create a route that says to get to 26.0 slash 24, 10.100.26.0 slash 24, go over the FortiGate 2 tunnel. Um, if you have multiple tunnels to different locations, maybe each one has multiple WAN interfaces, you can set multiple static routes and give them weights, which we will discuss later in a SD-WAN interface video. So for the sake of this, single site to site, no failover, anything like that, we'll keep our routes very simple. Administrative distance of 10 with a priority of zero. Click OK. So we have our phase one set up, we have our phase two set up. We have our static route. Now for this FortiGate, we just need the actual firewall policy. So IPv4 policy under policy and objects, and we'll create new. And basically inside to remote FortiGate. My inside interface to my FortiGate IPsec tunnel. Now, when I do this, I usually create a zone called IPsec or remote or branches, you know, something along those lines. And I put my IPsec tunnel interfaces within that zone. Um, if you guys want to know more about zones, I have a video about it. Check it out. It'll give you some details. But for the sake of this video, we're just going to go from our inside interface to our IPsec tunnel. And we're going to allow the communication to take place. I'm going to select all for source and destination. Um, I'm going to select and create actual subnets for this. So 
created local network 10.100.25.0.24. That'll be my source. And for my destination, I'm going to create a remote network. And that'll be the 10.100.26.0. So my policy is fairly granular, right? Only those two networks can go over it. We're not going to do any NAT translations because there's no overlap. If 192.168.1.0 existed on both sides and we wanted those networks to be able to communicate, we would have to do some level of NAT to do that. That's for a later video. So no NAT, you will do our basic application control and antivirus. We'll log all sessions and we are good to so click OK. So that's our policy. So we're done with FortiGate 1 for right now. So now we need to jump over the FortiGate 2. Our local network is 26.0/24. So VPN, IPsec tunnels, we'll create our new tunnel. And we're basically going to do the same thing on this side. 2 FortiGate 1 is going to be our tunnel name. Click Next. For our phase one, we will configure the remote end for the remote IP address of the gateway. We're using port one because that's our WAN interface. We're not using NAT traversal because this is not having to pass through a NAT device in order to build the tunnel. Our pre-shared key, we configured that to password on the other end. Ike version one, FortiGate to FortiGate, keep it simple. Main mode protection, we're gonna leave our encryption and authentications exactly as is, same with our DH groups. Uh, our lifetime, we set it to 86,400 on one side, so we have to have that match on this side. Phase 1's on each FortiGate need to match. Phase 2's need to match with one thing being different. Obviously, the local network in the Phase 2 is going to be the local network of the FortiGate that you're configuring. The remote network will be the remote network of the other end. So you'll flip those depending on which FortiGate you're on, right? So we'll go down to our advanced section of our phase two. Our local network on this one is 10.100.26.0 slash 24. And our remote on this one is the 25 slash 24. Auto negotiate, auto keep alive. And our timer for the phase two is 43,200, which is exactly what it was on the other one. So we'll click OK. So we have our phase one and our phase two is configured. Now, just like on the other one, we have to configure a route. Anytime a FortiGate gets a packet, it goes, do I have a route for this? No, go out default gateway. If I do, send it out the path that route defines. So 10.100.25.0/24 is accessible over the FortiGate 1 IPsec tunnel. Click OK. And now we just need our policy to allow that traffic to traverse. So we'll do two FortiGate one. Incoming interface will be port two. Outgoing interface will be two FortiGate one. And as you can see, this FortiGate hasn't been configured with zones. A lot of times, if you're not the owner of both FortiGates, or maybe they were deployed at different times, they may not have the same interface styles. So pay attention to your source and destination interfaces to make sure that you're selecting the right ones based on your source traffic that you wish to allow and the destination you wish to, to go to. And then on this side, we'll create our local network for this one. And then 10.100.26.0 slash 24 is local on this side. And the remote is going to be the 25. 10.100.25.0 slash 24. And for those of you that don't know, a slash 24 is a class C. Disable NAT, allow the traffic, same thing. I don't think we have any. Actually, this side, we're going to let this side be loose. Maybe this is someone else's FortiGate, so they're not as secure, right? Click OK. So we have our policy. So what were the requirements? Phase 1, Phase 2, Static Route, Policy. Those are the four main things. So let's take a look and see if our IPsec tunnel is up. And it is. So if you go under monitor, IPsec monitor, you can see that our IPsec tunnel is up. And if we check on the other side, we can see that as well, which is good. That means phase ones and phase twos match. 
Now we need to see if traffic can actually traverse. And what you would do in a situation like this is you could set your source IP. We're logged into FortiGate 1 right now because I switched over. So we can do exec ping dash options source and tell it the ping from the 25.1. For those of you that don't know, you can set certain parameters on your pings and things of that nature. So if you want to do a ping from one device to another, exec space ping dash options space source space your source IP. And then let's make sure I actually have ping enabled on this interface and I do. So now I should be able to ping 26.1 and it ain't replying. So that means we got to troubleshoot and find out why. Oh, why is this not working? Because my policy allows the inside network to go to the branch, not the other way around. So I'm going to clone the reverse of this and enable it. See, policy always gets you. That's a good thing to see. Now we'll see, and it works. Um, FortiGates are session-based firewalls. So what that means is once the session's built, the return traffic can be allowed. And since I didn't have the policy on FortiGate 2 to allow the traffic to traverse inbound, it blocked it initially. So what we're looking at here is my policy that allows from the remote network to the local network has traffic on it which means it works as intended. So that's how you do that. And if we were to actually, if we were to try on this end, it won't work either until I do that same policy. So for the sake of this one, we're just going to do ping dash options source 10.100.26.1 because this is FortiGate 2. Exec ping 10.100.25.1. And as you can see, it's not working but if I come over here and create the policy, just by cloning the reverse of the one I already made, this traffic will start working. Um, phase ones are good, phase twos are good, my static routes are good. And as long as the policy is built to allow the traffic that you wish to traverse, that's what you need in order for things to work appropriately. One of the biggest things that people run into when troubleshooting IPsec tunnels, especially if the tunnel is up but traffic isn't passing as intended, is they forget to look at the path of a packet. Every time a packet gets to a new hop or a new destination, that destination goes, okay, you're trying to get where? Do I have a route for there? Mm, no, go out default route. If you don't have a route, whether it be static or dynamically learned, it's going to go out the default route, that 0 .0 .0 .0 0 0.0.0.0 slash 0 route. So every step of the way, whatever device receives the packet goes through that process. So remember that. And basically, firewall policy is the same way. If it's crossing interfaces, the firewall is going to check it. My packet was going over the tunnel just fine initially. But then when it got to the distant end FortiGate, the FortiGate goes, Okay, you're allowed over IPsec, let's apply firewall policy. Oop, I don't have a policy to allow you to talk in. My policy only allows me to talk out. Deny traffic. Built the tunnel, built the policy the way it should, had two-way communication, and things started working. So, simple things can cause big problems. Just keep troubleshooting. The more familiar you get with troubleshooting, and especially when we start diving into debugs, the better things get. If you like this video and you'd like to see more like it, do me a favor. Hit the like button on the video, then hit subscribe and ring that little notification bell so you'll get updates whenever new videos come out. Remember guys, we don't just focus on the how, we focus on the why. So stay tuned.